to make them fly. They're yeah. trying. I think they're trying to find a way in. <laughs> they bloody are. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> but they don't know me. That's the problem. So they could, depending on the feed feed that's around, they can fill a box pretty quickly. I pulled boxes within a week. What? Yeah. Well, so that's just an egg carton, is it? Yeah, just straight egg carton. That's the queen, is that's it? That's the queen. Wow. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient B. I mean, me. And in this video, I'm going to explain why I finally got bees, even though I honestly didn't want to. Let's buzz into it. Yeah, I'm telling the truth. It's true that I really didn't want bees. And even now, I'm kind of skeptical of my decision to get these little fellas. It's kind of buzzing around in my head at the moment. Have I made the right decision or not? Um, I'm thinking I probably have because so many years you guys out there have been telling me, Mark, you're into self-sufficiency and you're doing all these different projects and DIY jobs and that. You've got this big veggie and fruit garden. It makes sense to keep bees. And it's always been in the back of my mind, keeping bees would be great for the garden, for pollination and all that. But I couldn't justify getting honeybees just for the sake of pollination. And the real reason I didn't want to keep bees is because as these cockies fly over, morning, was because I just thought they would be too much hassle and too much trouble for me. I'm already really busy doing everything else around here and I didn't want to bring in a little animal like this that I had to spend a lot of time looking after. That's my big worry. Is this gonna be really time consuming? Am I gonna find that it's taking me away from these other things that I'm doing and even YouTube? Well, time will tell. So how did I get these bees? Well, a mate of mine, Guy, ex-army, ex-bandy actually, played in the band in the military for 23 years. He is retired now and he helps out in the men's shed. And so long story short, I thought that I'd sponsor a project in the men's shed about building some beehive stands. And anyway, at the end of the day, he convinced me to buy one of these stands. And then when it was dark, Peter the Bee Man delivered the bees and we put them into their new home. And now what we're doing today is we're checking after a couple of weeks to see have they settled in? Is there any problems? We're basically doing the first bee inspection. It sounds like the guys are here now to do the inspection. I don't even have any bee kit. I haven't had time to, to buy this stuff yet. So uh, I'll be borrowing all that gear. So I hope it fits me and I don't get stung. Good day, Peter. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. We're good blessed. to see you again. We're blessed with a bit of sunshine. <laughs> yeah. There's a bit of smoke around. Uh, does that pacify bees if there's smoke in the air already? Well, not really. I wouldn't think so. So it yeah. sort of has to be right blown that's into there. Bit, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, so that's just an egg carton, is it? Yeah, just straight egg carton. And you're squishing that in? Yep. And then all you do is you make sure that you feel it like when you're, you know, feeding babies for the first time. Yeah. It's nice and cool, right? <laughs> and you're done. Get my uh, fencing suit on. Right so. This is all new to me. This is the first time I've ever worn a bee suit. So you just pull that one around. Yep. So this flap goes up and you'll get used to this. How do you put this on yourself? At very, you'll get very used to it, right? Yeah. You get these little rings around you can pull around. So you just do like so. I suppose you'll find out if it's not sealed. You'll know pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm feeling a little bit nervous. Don't be nervous. So what we can do with this is a little Velcro through here. I look like some horrible Hollywood <laughs> monster. <laughs> Okay, let's do this. Got your hive tool? Uh, hive tool. <laughs> um, That's the yep, one. got it. Smoker? Check, check. So, all right. So, Peter, first of all, what's your business called again? So, I, I run a business of uh, O Behave Honey. 
Oh, behave. Oh, behave, yeah. Okay. Oh, behave. Very much Austin power right? <laughs> um, yeah, so that's, that's what I, I run as, yep. a, as a secondary gig to my full-time job, so... Oh, cool. Yeah. Oh, lovely. And you're based here in Moray Field? Moray Field, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. All right, let's get into it then. All right, so normally just a couple of puffs at the front. Yep. And you're coming in. Uh-huh. And it's right for the smoker just to keep yep. smoking. Keep, keep it close and that way yep. if there's any pheromone in the area or, or being released, uh, it sort of, sort of cuts So it out. helps with pheromone as well. Yeah, yeah. Because of, you know, if you kill a bee accidentally, the pheromone yeah. comes out and it just masks, masks it. Masks yeah, it, basically. okay. Yep. And then, you know, you can do a bit on the hands <coughs> as well. That's always a handy thing if you've got no gloves on. Yeah, I'll just give me a bit of a puff. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Yo, you can't be too safe. Right, so... I'm keeping the queen excluder down at the moment. Okay, yep. Oh, just, okay, that's a queen excluder. Yep, and we just pull straight off. Here we go. I like to normally either pull the second or third frame out, only because sometimes in a 10 frame box, which is what you're running, yep. um, you'll have, I, I run it with what they call nine frames, only because One, it two, gives... Three. Well, so that's, got, that's actually got nine in it. Yeah, But it's correct. a 10 frame box, but it's got more space. Yeah, it gives you a bit more flexibility, yep. a bit more room to work. Right? Yeah. So if you run 10, you basically end up having a very tight uh, ah, gap. Yes. And then you struggle with trying. So a lot of people tend to yep. struggle with it. That so would I, be me. I'd be struggling. I probably. tend to run nine. Yep. So yeah, it's just a case of using a bit of leverage. You can break through, and in summertime, this wax will be very, very soft. Okay. Whereas it's a bit harder now. Yep. And all we do is we just give it a bit of a leverage. I'll take the first frame out for you. Okay. So see how the bees are up here. A lot of people want to smoke more. I just go <coughs> out the way, give him a bit of a wiggle. And it's a case of just these extra teeth that I mentioned about. Yes, so yes. So you're straight up. I normally just grab this here with oh, my there finger. there you go, yep. Underneath here. And I just hang it literally on the edge without pushing oh, it all the way. Yes. Whether you put that down or not, it's up to you. And the idea is just nice and slow, straight up. Oh, hell. All right. Look at that. That is a squillion bees. There's a few, yeah. Well, so what are we looking for now? Generally, we're looking for eggs, number one, to make sure you've got your, your, your queens healthy and happy. Yep. In here, you see brood, what they call capped brood. Yes. So that's all brood that's being capped off. A um, bit of honey up here. Oh. And if you look carefully in this area, all these bees are sitting there, heads down, bum up. They're either eating honey or yes. they're depositing nectar. Okay. All right? Yes. And you can see the, 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 the shininess of it, basically. Don't think we can see them, but little white larvae. So they're yeah, just. So, if I get so the they've been newly laid and now they've got to be capped, are they? Yeah, correct. Pardon my ignorance, but like bees drink water. So we've got a dam near us, yep. which you said was a good thing. Yep. Which is good. That's not our dam, but it's a neighbour's dam. Yeah, yeah. Um, and but what do bees eat then to sustain them for what 40 days they live for do they well yeah about six weeks yeah yep so um <clears throat> generally they, they eat obviously nectar okay right yep and, that's their main diet and their carbohydrate is like pollen so uh -huh. they actually mix nectar and pollen inside and we'll yep. see some see a bit of pollen because we saw some pollen being brought in before yeah i'll show you what that looks like so that's like their carbohydrate, like their storage of... Okay, so they, they get thirsty and they get hungry. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> just like us. That's yeah. exactly right, yeah. Well, a busy bee needs something to keep them busy. Yeah. So see how that's very fresh? Yeah. The, there's no eggs left on there. That's a bee emerging right there. Oh. That's a brand new baby bee. So yeah. that one. Yeah. Look carefully here. Yes. There's, oh, oh, there's a spot on there. That's the queen, is that's it? That's the queen. Wow. Did you put that on it? Yeah, that's just, just to make life a bit easier yeah. for people to, to oh, find. Oh, she's going in. So what's she doing? Oh, she's just oh. looking around trying to find somewhere to lay. Oh. She's always on the move. She never stops. Oh, my goodness. Only, only stops to lay. And how many eggs a day? Uh, winter time probably slows right down to under a 1,000, even probably less. So you can measure it from your side and just go straight up nice and easy. You'll get used to it. You'll you'll start feeling how the how the weight of it comes out and what's in there, and you'll get a feel. But they don't know me. That's the problem. Well, did you introduce yourself? Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Bee. <laughs> okay. Now you put yours. You did this thing. Yeah, just you can put them on an edge. 
just yeah. I mean, I'm not a professional here. This will probably slip and no, so swarm everywhere. Okay. You're right. Well, there's. Okay, I can see a bit of honey top left. Yep. Um, and I don't, don't know what else to look at. So we're looking for eggs. Now, you know, oh, you know okay. Well, oh, that's right. So we're yeah, that's the main thing, isn't it? Yeah. For a healthy hive. Yep. They've got to be laying eggs in there and capping it. Yep. Try to get their light from the sun. Oh, I see. Yeah. Now, if you look carefully through here. Yeah. You'll see there's eggs in there. See, there's a little white, very tiny oh, little yeah. white. Looks like rice oh, grain. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So you can see the rice grains pointing yep, up. Yep. And when they're pointing straight up, it means that it was laid within one to two days. Oh. When they're on a 45 degree angle, probably two to three, four days. Okay, well, I'm probably not going to remember that. It's, <laughs> you, but you'll, you, you'll get used okay, to it. Okay, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And, and once they're lying down flat, they've yep. normally got a bit of royal jelly on them already. Okay. So that means they've been there for about four to five days, sort of thing. Yep, so it yep. gives you an indication of when your queen was there last. Yep. So don't fret if you can't find your queen. Yeah. Uh -huh. As long as you can see eggs yes. and they're upright. Yeah. You know that there means... was a queen there at least two days ago. Okay. Yeah. So it's likely she's in here. Correct. Well, yep. we've already spotted her, obviously. Well, so we have now. Yeah. 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 Be... Right. But yeah. We'll see you later then. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, mate. <laughs> and if you're not seeing eggs, you got to think, where's the queen? Well, you got to wonder what happened to the queen. Yep. Um, and, and if you think of the life cycle of the bee, yeah. they, they, they live three weeks inside, yeah. three weeks outside roughly, okay? Yeah. So for the first three weeks of their lives, they become nurse bees inside. Oh, right, and, and they then, change. And then after that, at three, three weeks and one day, who knows, yeah. so around that time, yeah. they'll orientate outside the hive one day and they'll go and start flying and become a, a worker bee, a foraging bee. Oh, cool. So they kind of get, maybe get trained up in the nest and... I think in they the already hive. know what they're doing. <laughs> they're beanie they, have, they do a course. <laughs> they do a course for that first three weeks and then off they go. Well, that's it, yeah. yeah. So what do we do now? You can put that one back in. Oh, okay. here we go. And we try to orientate the same way. Yeah, right. well, I'm pretty sure it was yeah, like this. Yeah, that's exactly this. how it was. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that was yeah. my right. I didn't move my right. Yep. So that's a good way of knowing, isn't so it? So you could do it exactly the same way as you pull it out. Oh. You could lower that, just nice and steady. You can lower that one in. And this is where this dexterity comes in, yep. if you glove it, because you'll find you'll almost bounce them when you drop it in. Yeah. And just drop it in nice and slow. Oh my goodness. You're doing well, mate. Just take your time. And the worst thing you can do is you'll kill a couple of bees. But as long as the queen's not on that frame, you're fine. <laughs> oh, right. You've done well. Okay. All right, I can't get my fat finger. This is where the gloves, to me, are a hindrance, right? Yep. Oh. That's okay. <laughs> but you, did you hear the noise? As soon as you dropped yeah. it, the bees don't like that. They don't, they of course. Like the vibration. So you can leave that hanging there, reach around here, grab your tool Have I got again. that on there properly, Peter? Yeah, it looks okay to me. Yep, yep that's okay. Fine. Grab your tool again. Grab my tool. Hold the same way. You can literally just hook it under that, and you can then gently. This it. is my bung arm. I oh, can't, is it? Yeah, I can't turn. So I can do so it like, have... like like that. I, I, yeah, you could if you want to. But what you're going to do is basically put it underneath and just use that to help lower there. it. There. That's what you're going to do. Yep. And. That's it. Just lower that end down, and then you can go to the other side, whether you want to use a tool again that way. Okay, yeah, got it. Well, that was good. Yeah. And now here... You can do exactly the same thing. And that's it, you're done. Surgery was a success. Oh, yeah. yeah. There you go, you got a few bees on you. Are they trying to get me, or are they no. just looking? Well, have a look. They're, they're not doing anything at all. Look. Okay. They don't want to hurt you. They're just having a sniff. And right. if you want to get them off... Fly. They're trying, I think they're trying to find a way in. <laughs> they bloody are. <laughs> so they can tell Peter that none of them are on you. They're swarming on me because I'm an outsider here. No. And, I'm, and I killed one of them. No, no, they don't, they don't want to hurt you. Yeah, you know, I don't want to roll, like, like term, that's the terminology, isn't it? Yep. Roll a bee. Yep. You're doing good, that's good, perfect. And what, this is where you find... We'll open that up as well, we'll have a look. How much honey's in there? Yeah. Gee, it feels pretty heavy. Yeah, or is that honey. normal for the wood? Oh, oh no, that's no. probably the honey in there. <laughs>
might end up sliding this further here because oh having trying to, to yeah having to lift you know not great best, for the lower back not great for anything yeah. in the long run all right you can crack the lid so you've given me a pretty nice hive wow it's already had a heap of honey in it you could harvest this one you could yeah yeah do you typically harvest in spring and summer and not really winter Predominantly, yep. I, I have harvested through winter. I mean, we don't have a super cold winter. You can harvest a couple of frames through winter without any dramas at all. But if they've got honey yeah, store, yeah. let them be it. So they could, depending on the feed feed that's around, they can fill a box pretty quickly. I've, I've pulled boxes within a week. What? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought this would take months. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, it's so light. You just pull it straight out. Right, not right, capped. So that, there's nothing in there. So no. And if you have a, if you look straight into it, well, what you can do is you can give it a shake down like this. See the nectar oh, come out? Yeah. That's all nectar. <laughs> right. So there is some in there. The darker areas is yeah, nectar. That's all nectar in there. Yeah. It's already got nectar. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's just got nothing in there. Nothing in there, yeah. So they're already starting to fill on the outside frames. Well appreciate Peter you coming and helping me out and doing our first inspection. Mm. Um, uh, there's a heck of a lot of information you've given me already. It's, it is pretty amazing that you can have such a, a colony of little insects creating such a wonderful product that we all love as humans. It's almost like, I don't know, could you call it a symbiotic relationship between humans and bees? Do we help them out and they help us out or we just captivate them like we don't do much for them. No. <laughs> <laughs> the bees do a lot more good for us than what we do for them. That's yeah. My take. Well, of course, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. not just not just from a food point of view, the, the healing properties and the medicinal properties. Ah. Um, you know, of honey. Honey, um, bee venom. It's it's. Bee venom. Yeah, yeah. Bee venom is a massive industry. Wow. Mm. All right. Well, thank you very much, Peter. I'll make sure I've got no bees on my uh, glove. <laughs> you're most welcome. Mark. Thank you very <laughs> much. Un unbelievable. That's it. Well, what do you think of that? Personally, I'm a little bit beside myself. But, yeah, it's amazing. I'm still, I don't know, a little bit apprehensive about keeping bees. There was a lot of information in that first bee inspection with Peter. And I'm thinking that this is going to be a fair amount of work but you know so is filling up a garden bed or weeding those things feel like chores at the time but really you're getting out into nature you're learning new things and it's only good for the soul and the brain and the spirit and your health i i'm going to give this my best shot and i'm going to be looking very much forward to having some of our own honey from nectar collected through our own plants fruit and veggies that's even cooler and just one other thing we haven't named our queen you know the one with the little dot on it so i'd be interested to know what we should call our queen bee if you've got an idea or you've got a name whack it down in the comment section below and let's name her all right well i hope you liked this video if you did make sure you give it a big b thumbs up Share the video around, subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Cheers. So just say your name, Mark. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything before. Oh. <laughs> Imagine if I got stung. <laughs> You were hoping they'd crawl in there, no, weren't you? No, no, I'd never do that. <laughs>